When I'm seriously contemplating buying new tech, I do a deep dive into pretty much every YouTube that I can find, every tutorial, and every social media post that allows me to become intimately familiar with where my money's going, and I'm sure you're very much the same way. But when it comes to an enclosed Core XY 3D printer that are becoming very popular, and rightfully so, I've noticed a similar theme of remedies for best practices. So knowing that this wasn't going to arrive for a while, I printed some improvements such as a riser, a PTFE tube redirector, vibration control feet, and most importantly, a name tag. That's right, I have to have my name tags. So when I'm talking to members of the team, I can just call out the name of the printer and they know exactly where to go. I was pleasantly surprised to get a shipping notification from Elegoo about 40 days earlier than expected, but I had already printed all the parts that I wanted and all the prints were standing by. Now, the timing couldn't have been better because we have a couple of markets coming up and my secondhand FL Sun T1 Pro that I found on Marketplace crashed. It needed a new motherboard. Even though it was secondhand, I was able to provide the original proof of purchase and necessary information to get it repaired under warranty. While waiting on parts from literally the slow boat from China, my Centauri Carbon arrived. So let's get this baby unboxed. Since the Elegoo Centauri Carbons were in high demand due to the price of $300 for a high temp enclosed 3D printer that potentially rivals today's much more expensive 3D printers, they were released in waves that contained feedback upgrades from all of the communities. I was hoping to get the latest release and got nervous because of this early delivery. One early complaint was that the lighting on the first version was dreadful. And the other main issue was there needed to be a port for the upcoming multicolor delivery kit. So during this unboxing, let's see if we get both of these changes and live happily ever after. You have your user manual and all of the documentation that goes along with it. Although I've watched so many videos, I could probably do it blindfolded, but we're gonna follow along anyways. I honestly just cannot believe that you're getting glass and metal, not just a sheer piece of plastic. It's going to sit up here perfectly. I don't have to worry about it falling off. It's got plenty of space on both sides to stay up here. So that's a plus. We have the screen, power cord. We have the spool holder mount for the side. And got some glue, little tools, some grease, and some filament. That's a small roll, I guess, for the Benchy. You've got a USB drive here that you can probably have a model on and some replacement parts, kind of like a, like a nozzle cleaner. So I'll put that over here. I take this off the top here. This little clamp. Right off of there. Get the cardboard off of the print head. Now, I don't even, didn't even know which printer I got here because, you know, they're supposed to have three iterations and one gets better than the next one. So this one's got to have the, the port for the multicolor and then it's got to have the built-in light. And let's see if we got that light. And look at that. There's the internal light. They just deactivated the other one. So whatever they call their multicolor device, there's the port for it. And then you just take this, add a little bit of pressure, and should snap right in there. Yep. Now, that was made with ABS. But a good thing about this is as this moves, if it needs to, it can swivel all the way around. Genius idea. There, now I don't have to worry about it getting kinked up. Voila. Now this part's easy because all you have to do, you have three little red arrows and they tells you to take off the Allen screws. All right, get the screen put on. And 
now that all the screws are out of the way, we have one last thing. The spool holder. And before I do any of the setup, I'm just gonna go ahead and put these homemade feet on. And being that I know I'm gonna be using this, I'm gonna go ahead and put the riser on. Keep that PTFE tube from not only kinking up, but being able to rise up a little higher and not worry about hitting the glass. Nice. All right. Final thing, power cord. Also going to put in a USB chip. See any lights on it here yet, so. Now we gotta start the self-diagnostics test. So, here we go. Got to go through nozzle heating, heated bed heating, heat break cooling fan, main board cooling fan, input shaping, and automatic leveling. So we'll be back when it's done. I don't want to jinx myself, but so far so good. Did all the calibration and the first print. I'm not doing a Benchy. Friggin' hate Benchies. But I am putting the side holder for the top plate on the side and it came on the USB drive. So I'm printing it and check this out. A little bit of string in here. Just all we have to do is cut that out and we'll be good to go. Obviously today was just an unboxing, but we're going to have a lot more videos coming out talking about some print comparisons with Creality, Bamboo, and FL Sun. So we invite you to stick around by subscribing, hitting the notification bell, and if anything, please hit that like button if you got anything out of this video. And we will see you all in the next video. Have a great day.